Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the features I might look for in a sewing machine for patchwork and quilting. I often get asked what sort of things would be good in a sewing machine, so I thought if I do a little uh, video about it, it might help somebody out there. So I don't use a lot of different features in the sewing machine. Having said that, I don't want to sound negative. I use a machine a lot. I use a straight stitch for doing all my seams and things. I use a zigzag stitch if I'm trying to neaten something. Sometimes I want to put a little buttonhole somewhere. Um, there are times when I use a zigzag. Um, the other thing I would want to do is quite a lot of machine applique. And so many machines these days have a built-in blanket stitch, which is a really nice um, stitch to use over fused applique, which is what I mostly do. So for me, it would be a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, and a blanket stitch, and also I'd like the machine to have the ability to do free motion work so that because I do a lot of free motion quilting I want to be able to drop my feed teeth um, and the machine may come with a cover plate but uh, but I'm actually going to talk to you a little bit about this machine this, this is the one that I use this is a Benina it's a 550 quilters edition and it's a very nice machine to use it happens to have a straight stitch a zigzag stitch a blanket stitch and free motion ability. It also has many other stitches and features in the machine that could be useful at times but for my main use which is what I'm covering today those are the, the, the four sort of basic stitch options that I would like it to do. Uh, the other thing there's a few other little features on a machine that can be really handy and I'll just flip it on so that we can see. So you've got your you press a bar for your foot to go down up and down and things here um, the other thing that I find really useful, particularly if I'm doing applique, but also when I'm doing the free motion quilting in particular, is a needle down option. So there's a little button on the front here that when you press that, the needle goes down. And that means that every time you take your foot off the foot controller, the machine will stop with the needle in the fabric, which means that you can pivot and, and you're not going to lose your space. That, that in particular with applique and machine quilting, free motion quilting, if the needle's in the right place, there's a good chance that you're just going to be able to continue on without showing any sort of deviation when you have to turn your fabric or move your hands and things like that. Um, and again, if you want it back up again, you can just press the button. That feature on this particular machine is also available to operate with the foot controller. So if I just tap on the foot controller, the needle goes down. And then if I tap again, the needle comes back up again. So that's a really nice little um, extra feature, but certainly to be able to have the needle down or the needle up is a really good thing. Another little thing that this machine does that isn't particularly essential but is quite useful is that there is a little speed um, slide here, so that if you're wanting to work slowly and not let the machine run away with you, again if you're doing um, maybe the free motion quilting but uh, applique, sometimes our foot can, we can get really busy and our foot gets a little bit heavier and heavier and we go a bit faster than we want to. We can set a maximum speed with a little slider here, which is really handy. But that particular one isn't necessarily essential, but would certainly be nice. Um, another thing that I find really useful is being able to move the needle across at times. I, not with this particular foot that I've got on, but that I can position the needle to an exact position of where I want to sew. Um, I'll come back to that in a little while and explain when I might use that one. So I can move the needle to the left or to the right just by pressing a button here. So that's a really good thing. So another little feature I like is the needle threader. Now the needle threaders do come in different shapes and sizes and things but this is just a little pull down lever here that's set that you bring your thread down through it and it, it just pops a tiny little hook through your needle eye and catches your thread and pulls it back through for you. So that takes a lot of the stress out of threading the needle. So that's been a really good thing. And I'll just double check. I've made a little list here. I'll cover the needle down. Oh, and another little feature when I'm doing the sewing is to have a reverse op option. When I'm sewing at the beginning and end of seams, I often want to do a little reverse stitch just to help lock it. And so on this machine, there's a little button. So while I'm sewing, I can press that and it just reverses three or four stitches. Take your finger off the button and away you can go forwards again. So that's a really very useful feature on a machine. So we've got needle down, reverse, needle threader, and the needle across. And then of course you need to be able to do things like oiling 
and cleaning but all of that kind of comes with the machine and is in your accessory book and I have to say that as an accessory the book is a very very useful accessory because it helps you get out of all sorts of little tight places um, so then there's there are things like the accessories and I'll just quickly run through again the basic accessories and this machine has most of these accessories with it because it's a quilters edition it's set up for people to do patchwork and quilting so it comes with a regular standard foot for just general sewing um, which of course all sewing machines will have um, which it will allow you it's got it's got a little gap in it so you are able to do a, a, like a swing stitch like a zigzag stitch perhaps um, or straight stitch uh, many of the, the the other decorative type stitches you could do with that machine uh, sorry with that foot uh, the foot I use the most for my patchwork is the foot that's on here it's a quarter inch foot it's got a, a width of a quarter of an inch away from the standard needle position so that you can have your quarter inch seam which is a fairly standard seam that we use for patchwork it's also got various other markings on it to allow you to stop at quarter of an inch before start quarter of an inch from the end and things like that that you can look into if you happen to have one of those um, another foot I would use a lot and probably more than the, the, the one that comes with the machine as the basic one is this little open toe foot um, and on on this banana system it's foot number 20 and this is an open toe embroidery foot and now I would use this if I'm doing um, zigzag if I'm doing my blanket stitch uh, things like that anywhere where the needle is moving around or if I'm wanting to do something where I've moved the needle across possibly to be in a particular position so for decorative work um, or, or not the free motion but for the blanket stitch and zigzag work I would use that little open toe foot and particularly good when you're doing applique because it's open toed you can see exactly where you're going so that's that's a really nice little feature on a foot so another foot I would use uh, quite a lot because I make a lot of bags and purses and things with zips in is the zip foot again this comes with this machine and I think probably comes with a lot of machines um, as a standard foot when you put this foot on this is where the moving the needle across is particularly handy because this foot has only got one toe if you like not the two that most feet seem to have and so you would set your needle to go either side it's got a little groove in it I'm not sure how well you can see all this but you could set it up so that when you know which side of the zipper you're going to be sewing on you can move that needle across to sit exactly how far away from the foot and things you want that sewing line to be or how close in you want it to be so that's where that moving that needle across is particularly handy um, so that's the zipper foot now there's a, a couple of other feet this particular machine with its free motion foot so you do need a free motion foot of some sort this one comes with a with a um, BSR it's called that's a feature of this sewing machine um, which BSR stands for Benina Stitch Regulator and what this does is it allows you to do your free motion work now when you free motion in general you can drop your feed teeth um, and your feed teeth are the ones underneath here that take your fabric through and and there's a button to be able to do that so a lot of machines have that feature um, if you can do free motion work you can there'll be a button somewhere that you can drop the feed teeth some machines come with a little cover plate but the ones that I generally have been using have this option to drop the feed teeth. And this is the, the BSR foot. It comes with a couple of different little uh, plates that you can use for preference there. So this is it's a little open toe free motion foot. It's got a little plug on it that goes into a little socket around here somewhere. Um, I'm not going to put it on now to show you. I'm really just talking about some of the features today so when you pop that on what it does because you've been able to connect it into your sewing machine is it regulates your stitch length for you most often when you're quilting when you're doing free motion quilting we worry a lot about our stitch length whether it's too small whether it's too big or whether it simply is just varying so this stitch regulator will give you the opportunity to do a more even stitch size which is a desirable feature so that's what the banana stitch regulator does but as I said you do need some sort of foot that is free motion because when you're free motioning you drop your feed teeth out of the way and there's usually a little gap because you're moving the fabric yourself rather than it feeding it through so that's a good little um, feature of the machine um, but certainly a free motion foot of some sort 
Now the other foot that I would strongly recommend um, is, unless your sewing machine has a dual feed, is a walking foot. This machine does not have what they call a dual feed, which I won't go into today. Um, but the, what the walking foot does is provides you with a, a dual feed. So the idea of the dual feed is if you're sewing something that, like when we're on a quilt, where we've got a spongy layer in between with our, like our wadding or our batting in between, which allows fabrics to move a little bit. Um, as you're feeding through, when you're doing regular sewing, when you feed through your little feed teeth that are underneath, they take your fabric through for you. They're kind of grabbing it and pulling it through. Um, and if you've got a spongy layer, the batting wadding layer in between, you might find that that wants to slip a little bit because nothing's pulling it through in the same way on the top. So this is what the walking foot does. It has a little mechanism and system in it where it walks your fabric through. So what, that's why it's called a walking foot. So you've got your bottom one pulling through and you've got your top one walking through so that you get this even feed. So that's what the walking foot does for you, particularly good if you're doing straight line quilting, um, if you're doing putting on your bindings and things like that by machine, um, anywhere where you're wanting to work on a bit of a thickness um, or in some cases difficult fabrics where it just feeds it more evenly and you don't get that sort of pulling that can happen. And, and also if you're working on stripes, if you're just doing a seam where you're trying to keep stripes matched, that even feed keeps the top and the bottom fabric feeding evenly together. So a walking foot is um, pretty much an essential, I think, with a sewing machine. So it comes with all this complicated stuff. This particular one has a couple of arms that you can put in if you were trying to do some parallel sewing, parallel lines. You can slot that into the, the distance that you require and it's got one that could go the other way. So if you were trying to do parallels from the other direction um, and you would just fix it with the screw to the distance that you want and then it can run along a previous line of sewing to keep things nice and straight. So it can come in quite close, quite far apart. Um, and there's a couple of other little um, foot plates for various other aspects of sewing as well in there. Today I'm covering patchwork and quilting primarily. Of course this does apply to a lot of other sewing, but if you're doing clothes and things there's other features that you quite likely would want. So that's the walking foot, a very useful tool. So I'll just do a little recap of things that I would like in my sewing machine. I would like it to have a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, a blanket stitch and free motion ability. I'd like it to be able to have a quarter inch foot, an open toe embroidery foot, a walking foot, a free motion foot. And I would like it to have a needle threader and I would like it to have um, the needle moving position. I'd like it to have a reverse option and I do quite like the little speed controller. There is another feature of this machine and I'm sorry I haven't got it with me today. There's a knee lift that you can plug in. There's a little socket down here. So it's a little lever that comes in and hangs down in front of the sewing machine that you can reach with your knee. And what it does when you're doing machine applique, it's a really great tool. Um, when you're doing machine applique, you'd have a different foot on and things, but you're, you're working things around and you have to keep stopping if you're going around a curve and things like that. And normally you'd have to take your hand off to keep lifting the foot to move your fabric. What the knee lift will let you do is operate this. You don't have to take your hand off because as you flick with your knee, which is under the table there, it will lift that foot for you so your hands can stay there. So the knee lift is a really nice feature in the sewing machine as well. So I'm hoping that's cleared up some ideas. Relatively basic. A lot of the machines have a lot of other features that you may choose to use. But for just basic patchwork and quilting, those are the features that I would look for in the sewing machine. Thank you.